it's funny how some people do things and other people just like to sort of talk about things, isn't it? You know, and it's the same with groups. I don't know if you've noticed that. Some some groups just get on and sort of get, you know, roll their sleeves up and get out there and start digging or whatever it is they've got to do. And then other groups, they just like to sort of knit and natter, knit and natter week after week after week and, and nothing ever gets done. And, you know, here we are in a sort of bit of a crisis, a bit of a crisis for humanity at the moment. What with, you know, as if you've been on my channel, you'll know that I've been talking about some of the, the strange, weird things that the government have been doing recently. What with their proposing ideas of a digital ID in which all your information is known by the government that any department in the government and their third party contractors like, I don't know, somebody like Serco, for example, could find out all about you uh, from the database. And, and the idea that that is a necessary thing that we're all going to have to have. And then there's the sort of the threat of the CBDCs, the central bank digital currency in which uh, um, money, of course, can be programmed. And if you're not a very good citizen, then uh, they can stop you from buying diesel or petrol or even meat or even the whole concept, really, that we are having to have to go towards net zero and the government passing or wanting to pass legislation which will force you to have a smart meter, whether you want one or not, and that if you have a wood-burning stove or um, a, a, an ordinary gas boiler, you've got to remove that because the government have decided what type of fuel that you can burn. I mean, these sort of weird things that's being pushed down on us, um, which none of us have actually voted for, wasn't in the manifesto. And um, even if you vote for the other side, if you want to vote at all, that is, you've got to have. And we're in this very strange time. And, and of course, we've all got options. There are different ways of doing things. And some people are actually getting on and setting up groups, whether that's WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups, and they're getting over. I mean, there's people like Food for Change um, who have been setting up initiatives. They've been on my channel and they're now making sure that people can get organic food. They don't have to go to the supermarket and have some of that dubious food that doesn't have enough minerals and vitamins in it or indeed the highly processed other foods that you can buy in the gaily coloured uh, packaging um, so now I was involved with uh, this uh, lovely group of people the the PHA the People's Health Alliance I was actually involved at uh, their inaugural gala dinner which was a fundraiser to raise money so that they could uh, get a I think it was a telephone line all set up. Um, but they've got hubs now, not only in this uh, country, but all around the world, in Canada, in Australia, in New Zealand. I mean, it's absolutely amazing what they're doing there. It's an integrated approach to health, as it says. Um, prevent rather than treat. Take the responsibility for your own health. And it's an alternative, you know, an alternative than going just to your doctor and having Big Pharma give you a whole load of pills with all the millions of side effects. And that's rolling out and they're actually getting on with it. It's, it's quite amazing. And it was lovely to be involved at the inaugural gala dinner as an MC and uh, see all the wonderful things and that were going on. They had Matt Letizier there. I've interviewed him and Jason Noble from the Republic of England. I've interviewed him as well, funnily enough. And it's, it's fascinating to see these people who are getting on with things. Another one, of course, is the, uh, the Great Resist. This is a conference that is basically taking to the road. And every few months, it's, it's going around the country, informing people about what is going on and how we can do things to stop it. And I, I think it's absolutely marvellous. Again, I've been involved with it. Liz uh, Phillips has uh, been behind it and set it up. But um, again, it's this sort of rolling out the conference to various venues. The next one is in Liverpool. 
and you'll be able to come along very cheaply and listen to all the arguments about things like 5G, alternative health, um, law, things like that that will help you and why, again, we need to push back against the tyranny that is coming down. A lot of people, of course, will remember that they've been mandated or very much forced into having a, a medical intervention that perhaps now that we know, listening to the science, was perhaps not the best thing after all. And it's even been suggested, and I say suggested, that on the 4th of October, I think at around 2 o'clock or something like that in America, and maybe about 8 o'clock in the UK, a certain uh, Wi-Fi test or mobile phone test is going to happen to see if it activates something that might have been injected into people, a sort of low-level activation. Activation. Now, I can't say whether that's actually happening. There's so many rumours out there, but that might affect people and it's worth keeping an eye. If I was uh, anybody who had had a medical intervention, for example, I think I would be turning off my phone at those appropriate times and getting out into the countryside away from any, any kind of um, signals. Um, but that's just me, of course. But there are those groups that are getting on and doing things. One of the things that has been concerning me is we've seen a lot of crime recently. There's certainly a lot of people with knives, young people, for example, and, and people have sent me videos in which um, I've seen some rather horrific attacks. Uh, somebody buying a ticket the other day, apparently, at Sunderland uh, Railway Station, and a couple of youths came up, probably in their late teens, um, and took off a bag off this chap he sort of argued can I have my bag back no and as soon as he was sort of in a confrontation with them a bunch of others about four or five came up with blades and stabbed him I don't know what happened to him because the CCTV camera ended after this repeated stabbing attack I saw another one of a young girl being attacked by her peers on another railway station funny how it happens on railway stations isn't it um, but anyway she was um, a attacked and bullied but not just bullied as in give us your pocket money or your dinner money no 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 she was pushed to the ground and repeatedly kicked in the face it seems to me that we do have these violent streets and I know what it's like we've heard that the police are no longer interested in shoplifting and some of the shops their security are told no no you can't go chasing after anybody you can't even touch them apparently if somebody shoplifts you're not supposed to restrain them or do anything and it seems that the country is is getting more and more down and if the police aren't interested in all of these things you start to think that actually we need to take responsibility now heaven forbid that we would have to set up our own militia I mean what kind of world would it be if we had to set up our own militia to sort of take now I, I'm not into vigilantes and things but if we had to set up our own little army to try and protect ourselves from what might happen in the future that would be a bit of a worry and I saw a video this morning suggesting that some of these illegal people who've been coming over in rubber boats that we're putting up in hotels and looking after and giving them doctor's appointments and this that and the other have got possibly up to six and a half years legal status to stay in the country which is a bit strange when we have uh, the 2030 agenda going on and there may be reasons for them to be there. After all, if the um, government is able to lock people down in their houses, as we saw three years ago, and arrest anybody for going out and sitting on a park bench for a few moments, you know, a little old lady sitting there having a cup of tea because she's just out on her own and the police can swoop down and arrest her. It seems remarkable that the government can do that, lock us all up, but they can't actually turn away illegal people coming into the country on small rubber dinghies and not just saying, actually, you're not very welcome, you have to go through the legal channels. Ever so sorry, but that's just the law of our land and that we seem actually more likely to be inviting these people. So what is going on? There seems to be... People who are doing stuff 
And then those people that are joining these groups and just chitter-chattering and not actually doing something. I think we do need to get into a situation in which actually we can all unite finally together and say, look, if the government can't do anything and we're worried about it, then maybe we've got to take back the responsibility and actually get off our backsides and start doing things just like some of these people I mentioned are already doing.